Hey guys, welcome back to my kitchen and welcome back to another monthly freezer meal prep. This week I am going to be focusing on budget friendly meals with prices of everything going up. I just wanted to give you guys ideas that didn't cost you a whole lot but are still quick and simple and will be filling for your family. So I started out by putting some ground beef into the frying pan for a baked meal I'll be doing here in a moment. And then I also started some hot water boiling because we're going to be working on putting together some potato wedges and you need to blanch them before you put them into the freezer. I pulled out a few other supplies and I got a box of my freezer bags and I really like these freezer bags. They have a great bottom on them to help them stand up while you load them up. So the first thing we're gonna be starting out with is some firecracker drumsticks. And drumsticks are so inexpensive compared to other meats and you can really make them delicious in the air fryer or in the oven. And I wanna thank Auntie Nono's for sponsoring today's video. They have amazing spices and I'm using their firecracker sea salt over these drumsticks just with a little bit of olive oil and this cut down on time like crazy whenever you are prepping because I didn't have to pull out five or six spices it was all right there for me and this stuff tastes so delicious this would also be great on chicken wings as well I want to tell you a little bit more about Auntie Nono's spices while I'm cutting up my potato wedges here these seasonings are paleo friendly vegan friendly gluten free non GMO kosher and no MSG the flavor profile of the firecracker sea salt is a spicy salt with chipotle jalapeno and scorpion chilies beyond meats and veggies you can add this to a slice of pizza add it to popcorn in your chili on eggs and toast you could whisk it into a vinaigrette to make an amazing salad it has so many possibilities on the potato wedges I am using the everything seasoning which it truly lives up to its name you can use this on literally everything its flavor profile is savory not too salty with notes of garlic and onion and it is so delicious I think this would be perfect on top of avocado toast you could really put it anywhere. Then I decided to prep some salmon and this is not going in the freezer, however it could. I was just prepping it for the next day and I went ahead and added in Auntie Nono's seafood seasoning. I cannot wait to use this stuff on shrimp on the grill this summer. It's going to be so delicious. Its flavor profile is savory citrus with notes of lemon, paprika, and mustard. Talk about mouth watering. All I did was rub it on to my salmon to kind of give it a dry marinade before I put it on the griddle the next day. We fall in a little bit in love with these spices in our household and I know that you will too. So definitely check out the link in the description box to find out how you can get your hands on these. You will be thanking me later and let's get back to cooking. All right, so to add to that ground beef that I started in the beginning, I chopped up a pepper and a onion, just some green bell pepper, and I added that in. We're going to be making something that is a traditional dish. We're gonna dress it up a little bit, but my daughters have been begging for spaghetti. I personally grew up eating a lot of spaghetti, so it's not something I make very often, but they've been requesting it. So I decided I'm gonna find a way to dress up some spaghetti, and I also put in some meat into my big pot to do chili a little later on in this video. Next I got started on some teriyaki chicken and this is a really easy marinade to put together and I will also be making some fried rice in this video to go along with this meal. I like to slice up my chicken pretty thin whenever I'm doing like a stir fry style chicken and it's really simple. It's like a cup of teriyaki sauce. You can do sugar free teriyaki sauce if you are um, on keto or anything related to sugar free and make this recipe and then you can also use a sugar-free brown sugar then I just used a veggie peeler to put a few pieces of ginger root right into the marinade and I actually did refrigerate those for a while before putting it into the freezer so the flavors would all soak into that chicken and I also put in some minced garlic 
This is just really easy and so yummy. Then since I was going to be doing two rice dishes this day, we'll get to the second one here in a second, I went ahead and cooked up a bunch of rice right in my pressure cooker. To be honest, it's been a while since I've made rice in here and it's so simple, it's so much easier than cooking it on the stove and I feel like it turns out perfect every single time. So back to the baked spaghetti, I just put in some minced garlic, mixed that all around. I love this chopper tool I recently got for ground burger and it works for a lot of other things. So I'll try to remember to leave it linked below. And then I put some Italian seasoning, some seasoned salt, and some black pepper and some regular salt. And then I dumped in our favorite red sauce. It is from Aldi. And this is actually the meat version of that sauce. And then I put a block of cream cheese in, just let it all soften and mix around. And then I did use thick spaghetti for this. I thought maybe it would hold up a little bit better in the freezer instead of just having regular spaghetti. So I got that cooking up in the water, just following the instructions on the box. And I chopped up my burger that was frying up for my chili. And once my cream cheese was all melted up, it is ready to be mixed into the spaghetti. So next I'm adding a bell pepper and an onion to my chili, just chopping it up, dicing it up. Um, you can do all kinds of peppers in this. If you watch my channel for a while, you know that a lot of times with my chili, it kind of changes every time I make it. However, this time around, I did write up the exact measurements and everything in the description below. So if you want my no bean chili recipe, it's in in the description of this video. So as you can see, I'm adding the spaghetti into the sauce and just stirring it around and then it's ready to go into the pan. So to layer it in the pan, you're going to need some shredded mozzarella. So I put that right into my food processor and this is 16 ounces of shredded mozzarella. Like I said, we are dressing up spaghetti here. So we're making it more decadent and really cheesing it up. You could definitely do this with gluten-free spaghetti noodles, by the way, if you want a gluten-free version of this. Then I'm using my handy dandy little oil dispenser. I love this thing. I just recently got it and I've been using it almost every day. And you just layer in the spaghetti, put in a layer of cheese, and then put a second layer of spaghetti and top with the rest of your cheese. I did leave a little spaghetti aside because my daughters were literally begging for some spaghetti to eat while I was making this video. So I left some out for them and then I just covered it with foil. Back to the chili. So I just mixed together my cauliflower rice and the meat and the onion and pepper. And then you're gonna add in diced tomatoes. The roasted diced tomatoes are really great for this. You're also gonna add tomato sauce some chili powder, cumin powder, onion powder, garlic powder, salt and pepper. And I truly just do this by taste and that's gonna be how it's written below in the instructions is do it by your taste. If you like more of a cumin taste, go ahead and add more of it. If you like more chili powder, go ahead and add more of it. If you like hot chili, spicy chili, then go ahead and add some cayenne pepper. You can tweak it to make it the way that you like it. And here you're gonna see how perfect rice comes out in the pressure cooker. You just take a fork and fluff it up and it's so simple. All right, so now we're going to be starting a taco casserole or honestly, we may use this as a burrito filling because it's just a great mixture. It turned out so delicious. And then in my frying pan, I am putting some frozen veggies and just kind of cooking them up just a little bit. And then I'm throwing some rice in there to do some fried rice. And to be honest, every time I make my fried rice, I make it a little bit different. It's not the same every single time. But this time I used some olive oil, some garlic powder, 
some onion powder, some ginger, and some soy sauce. And then I did splash a little bit of the teriyaki sauce in as well. My favorite thing to use in fried rice is sesame oil, but I didn't have any on hand. So I kind of had to make do with what I had. And then of course, right at the end, you wanna go ahead and crack a couple eggs in it. That really gives it the true fried rice texture and taste. Then I scooped out the fried rice into a bowl so it could cool down before I put it in a bag and I got back over to my taco casserole. So I added some sour cream. If you are dairy free, you could totally add some dairy free sour cream. I added in some rice, some black beans and a little bit of frozen corn. I'm not a big fan of frozen corn, but in Mexican style dishes, I really do like those big pieces of corn. And I just stirred everything around and just kind of let it simmer a little bit to let the flavors combine. The recipe calls for a taco seasoning packet. However, I just used some cumin and some onion powder, some garlic powder and chili powder and it gave it an amazing taste. Then I bagged up my fried rice once it had cooled down just enough so that I could seal it off. Then the taco casserole was done and I just put it in a pan. I actually did reserve a little bit of this to make some burritos this week. I just felt like it was such a great mixture and you could use it in some different things. Next, I pulled out some of my home canned potatoes because I'm going to be making some shepherd's pie and this is a really easy recipe. I love having canned potatoes right on hand. You don't have to worry about waiting for them to cook up. They're already soft. So I went ahead and threw a stick of butter in there. I emptied out one of my sour cream containers, so whatever was left in there, some salt, some pepper, and a little bit of minced garlic. And then I just used my immersion blender to kind of blend it all up. With the burger that I was frying for the shepherd's pie, I added some more of those frozen veggies. They're just a great and expensive way to add veggies into your food. And as the potatoes got warmer, they were a little easier to blend up. So I went ahead and finished blending those together. Then I added in some of the other ingredients. I will leave the recipe for this below. I loosely followed it. I also added some of the everything seasoning um, that I showed you earlier to this. I added some flour to just thicken it up a little bit. You could also do gluten-free flour if you are gluten-free, and this would be a great gluten-free recipe. So I had actually doubled this recipe, so it made two pans, and you put the first layer down, which is the meat and the veggies, and then you top it with the mashed potatoes. One thing I love about this dish is that it is a meal in a pan so literally all you have to do is pop it right in the oven and you will have a meal ready for dinner don't forget to stick around till after i label these because i do have my tip of the week on long-term food storage last time i showed you all how i canned my carrots so if you want to check that out you definitely can um, but i just went ahead and used my mnemonic label maker you all know i love this label maker it's waterproof so it doesn't matter if these go in the freezer and I can quickly type up my instructions and everything I need to know right on there on my iPad and then print it out and pop it right on to all of my packages. Okay, at the end of my meal preps, I have been including something that is either canning or some sort of long-term food prep, and I'm going to be making up some very simple bread today. The reason I'm sharing this bread recipe with you is because most of the stuff that goes into it is shelf-stable for some period of time, so you pretty much can have all of this stuff on hand at any time. To make it, it is just with regular white flour, so it's not the healthiest version, but it still doesn't have all of the added preservatives that 
store-bought bread has. So I am learning how to make sourdough bread and I want to master a good whole wheat bread, but right now this is the one that I've learned how to make and make it successfully. And I also store flour in long-term storage bags in my food storage area and I will leave those bags linked below. They're great for storing white flour and so I always will have it on hand. Then you can use shortening or the traditional method for this recipe is to use lard. So whether or not you like to use that, it's up to you. But this is something that stays on the shelf for a very long time as well. You need some salt, some brown sugar, and of course your yeast, and then some warm water. I'm gonna go ahead and combine everything, and then I will share with you where I put this while I'm meal prepping. All right, because I have a dough hook attachment for my mixer, this is how I've been making this bread. You could do it by hand for sure, but it's just simpler if you have a dough hook. So you're gonna take a little bit of that warm water. I believe there's three and a half cups of warm water in this. You want about like a half cup to dissolve the yeast in. Once the yeast has completely dissolved, then you add in the rest of the warm water. You go ahead and you add in the brown sugar and you mix all of this together with the shortening or lard, depending on which one of those two you're using. And I just kind of mixed my hook around a little bit in the shortening to chop up into little pieces in the water along with the salt and the yeast. And then you just start adding flour. This recipe is so easy and I feel like the more you think about it, the more that you may do something wrong, just don't think about it, mix it up, follow the instructions, it's just that simple. So I just slowly added more and more flour as I went. I didn't over mix it. Um, you definitely don't wanna over mix it. You don't wanna overkill on your yeast. And I remember as a little girl, my mom making bread and this was her trick. She just threw a dish towel around it whenever you've got flour that's poofing all around. So once your dough is completely combined, you just wanna kind of make sure it's all put together. And then I love making bread whenever I'm cooking other things because it makes my kitchen warm and that's the perfect way to get your bread dough to rise. So I just cover it up and I leave it on the counter until it doubles in size. Once it's doubled in size, like you see here, you're going to literally punch down the dough until you've gotten most of the air out of it, and then you'll cover it again and let it rise a second time. I love this recipe because it truly is something you can have everything for. And if you're gonna keep around flour to make bread in case of an emergency, you may wanna practice making the bread so you know what you're doing if that emergency ever arises and you need to make bread yourself. So I'm using my little oil dispenser again. And to be honest, I don't really care for these glass bread pans. I like the metal ones better. As you're gonna see when it's done baking, the metal ones, literally the bread just lifts out of them. Whereas with the glass ones, sometimes I have to run a knife along the edge just to get them out. So I will link the metal ones if you're interested in doing this. This does make four loaves of bread. So once it's risen the second time, all you need to do is divide your dough into four pieces. And as you're gonna see, I'm not even putting this on the counter. This is how easy this is. I'm just grabbing blobs of it out of the mixing bowl. I'm just kind of tucking it under so that it goes into a loaf. And this is a little trick. You wanna twist your dough so that you're pulling apart the dough that way and it's easy to separate and then you just pull under the pieces as you can see to kind of give the top a more rounded look. You set them into the bread pans and then you're gonna cover them one more time and let them raise again. And then you want them to be about double sized before you throw them in the oven and you bake them for 30 minutes at 350 and there you go, you have bread. So my challenge to you is to be practicing bread recipes that are easy like this one in case you are in a position where you need to make your own bread, you know how to do it. Also another quick little tip, if your bread comes out and the crust is a little too crusty for you, which I felt like this could have been a little softer, you can make some paper towels towels wet and drape them over the bread until the paper towel is dry, your crust will be nice and soft. 
So there's a little tip for you if your bread is a little too crusty. And then I went ahead and just sliced some up and my daughters ate some with some homemade jelly. That is one of the treats in our house that we really enjoy. Let me know in the comments if you like to make bread or if you've never made bread and you wanna try this recipe out, I would love to hear how it turns out for you. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you guys for watching. I hope that this video inspired you. Leave me a comment, that always helps me out. Give this video a like and I'll see you all in my next video.